There are different types of unemployment. First of all, there's frictional unemployment. Frictional unemployment is sometimes called search unemployment because it's when somebody quits a job to go look for a better job. It is um, considered voluntary unemployment most of the time, like um, the person has decided to move on to bigger and better um, appreciation of their skills, um, usually in better pay. Um, and also part of this category is those people who are going from college to their first job um, or to, from high school to their first job, assuming that they have um, skills that society is going to want, then um, they're just unemployed temporarily while they find a workplace that wants their skills. That's frictional unemployment. Structural unemployment is unemployment because the structure of society around you is such that it has no use for your skills. So this is going to be something like um, a uh, horse and buggy driver, perhaps, who that's their only skill is horse and buggy driving. Well, now that the structure of society doesn't need horse and buggies, they are out of work and they can't find a job because they have no skills that the modern society wants around them. So that's one example. Others are going to be factory workers who are replaced by machines. Another example is going to be um, people whose skills don't match the geographic area around them. So someone might have a skill, but perhaps all those jobs have moved out of the country, or they're like an, a great movie actor, but they live in the middle of Hokkaido where there's no film industry, something like that. So when your skills don't match the geographic area around you, and that's the reason why you can't find a job, that's called structural unemployment. Those, these two types of unemployment are said to be quite naturally occurring in any dynamic society. Economists say that you want to have a certain amount of your population that's free to pick up and move on to a better job, or you want to have a society that's dynamically changing technologically and so forth without worrying about people not being able to get a job because of it, because your society will be getting better. The third type of unemployment, however, cyclical unemployment, is the one that economists worry about. They worry about this one because it's unemployment that's due to a downturn in the business cycle. So you learned about the business cycle and how real GDP, or in other words, real output of the country, will sometimes increase over time and sometimes decrease over time. Well, if the output of your country is decreasing, then you don't need, the businesses don't need as many workers to make that lesser output, and so they fire people. When they fire people because of this downturn in the economy, that is called cyclical unemployment. This is the only type of unemployment that economists say is, um, is avoidable and wasteful and not wanted in a society. The other two types, frictional and structural, are natural types of unemployment in a dynamic society. So the natural rate of unemployment is going to be that perfect unemployment rate that economists want, which is going to be what unemployment the unemployment rate would be if you didn't have cyclical unemployment, that wasteful type of unemployment. So it's basically going to be at the addition of frictional and structural unemployment. So in this economy, what is the actual unemployment rate? To find the actual unemployment rate of a country, you would add up all the categories of unemployment. To find the natural rate of unemployment, which categories would you add up? Which categories do economists say are nat naturally occurring? Time's up. The actual unemployment rate is going to be 9%, and the natural rate of unemployment is 5%. When any politician or news publication says the economy has reached full employment, when they say full employment, we've done it, that does not mean there's a 0% unemployment rate. It means that the economy has achieved the natural rate of unemployment. Potential GDP is the level of GDP that's produced when the economy is at full employment. So when you have that dream amount of people working where there's 
no cyclical unemployment, all those people are actually making stuff, then the total GDP that the country produces when they're achieving natural rate of unemployment is called potential GDP. The costs to unemployment are quantitative using Okin's law, and what it is is that for every 1% of cyclical unemployment, because cyclical unemployment is the difference between the natural rate of unemployment and the actual rate of unemployment. So for every 1% that you of cyclical unemployment, the economy is going to end up suffering a loss of 2% of output. 2% of real GDP is going to be lost. And so your actual GDP will be less than your potential GDP whenever there's cyclical unemployment. The GDP gap is the difference between potential GDP and what is actually being made. If your economy achieves full employment, and so they're achieving that natural rate of unemployment, then the actual GDP will equal potential GDP. Here's a graph showing the natural rate of unemployment from 1970 to a little after 2000, I guess. And the idea here is that the natural rate of unemployment, look how smooth that thick black line is, that thick black curve is. And the idea is that the natural rate of unemployment is not actually figured out each year. Um, when they poll people, they can't ask people why they're unemployed. In many cases, they don't know or would be offended if you asked them why. And so you can't ask them when you're polling people. So economists have to come up with an estimate of what the natural rate of unemployment is and then um, um, revise their estimate over time as the economy changes, if there's data to reflect that the economy might be changing.